So on my first hunt ever, I went hunting with an MDT ACC, which is a super heavy competition chassis. And it took me all of about five minutes to realize that there must be a better way to do it. I had a heavy Palmer barrel on there. It, the ACC, it's got square edges for shooting off of props. It ate into my shoulder blades. No matter how you had it, it was uncomfortable to carry. And I swore that I would never hunt with it again. But I did, multiple times. Anyway, so without further ado, Sam is finally behind me. Now I named her Sam Short Action Monster. So I pretty much had a very specific goal that I designed this rifle for. And I'm gonna take you guys through the whole rifle, sort of from the front to the back. Now if you watched my headshot only video that I did last year, I'm actually going hunting there in about a month, okay, with this rifle. Now to put that into perspective, Last year I was shooting a 7 Psalm on that hunt and basically this chambering, the 6.5 Sherman short mag is very much like the Psalm. I'm going to show you an uh, overlay here of what the sort of parent case looks like or the, the factory case that you buy from Rich at Sherman Wildcats and then on the right there'll be one that has been fired already and you'll see it's very much like the dasher, the shoulder angle is going to come in and the shoulder actually moves a tiny bit up the neck but not massively. So to put this into perspective for you guys, the sort of ballistic characteristics of this cartridge, on your average 6.5 Creedmoor, you know, you're buying ammo off the shelf, you're probably running a 140 grain bullet at about 2,750 feet per second. Now, if you're loading them yourself and you're loading them a little bit hot, maybe you can get up to 2.820. There's sort of, there's a couple of nodes round about there. Now, this caliber specifically has a magnum bolt face, so it's larger than a 6.5 Creedmoor. I can show you guys how that looks like too. And also it's going to be able to shoot a heavier bullet. Okay, you can obviously shoot the lighter bullets at 3,200 feet per second, but I like to run my guns at sort of a mild pressure. And I find that spikes in the temperature or any sort of other weird environmentals generally have a lesser effect when you're not shooting at like the peak performance of what the caliber can offer. So I'm going to aim to shoot the 156 grain Burger Extreme Outer Limit Hunting Bullet at about 2950 feet per second. That's sort of where I'm going to um, aim to get it towards and that shouldn't be a problem. Now this rifle has actually in fact been shot. It's not brand new. Well it's brand new but it's not brand new. So here's some video of Bruce that actually built the rifle from Bat Machine. Shout out to Bruce for building me. What is gonna be a laser? I haven't shot this yet. It does look like it kicks like a mule because it is ultra light and we're gonna get into that now. So Bruce, here's the first, I think this was the first four rounds down the barrel after he bore sighted it. And it was literally a thumb suck load with a 147 ELDM and he actually didn't even use the right powder so I'm probably going to be shooting H1000 in this and I'm hoping for some good results so we're going to have to heal up my hand we're going to expedite this process somehow and uh, we should be ready to go hunting with the setup anyway without further ado 
let me run you guys through sort of everything we're working with. Now, straight from the get-go, the first thing you guys are gonna notice is the barrel is a little bit different. Now, you would see on the close-up shots, this is, in fact, the carbon fiber barrel. Now, at SHOT Show 2020, yeah, SHOT Show 2020, man, time flies. I met the guys from International Barrels. Now, they approached me and said, listen, Pete, we like what you're doing. We want you to try our brand new carbon barrel and that is exactly what is on this rifle. So now this is a one in seven and a half twist barrel. For those of you guys that aren't familiar with the carbon barrel, it's still a steel barrel. Okay, they turn it down to just outside the bore diameter, then lay carbon, press out the resin, and that's how you get this result. You're not actually shooting through carbon fiber because that would last about five rounds, probably not even. Um, so yeah, this is gonna make it super light. Then at the back here, we've got the bat machine bumblebee action. Now fun fact, the bumblebee is actually the smallest and lightest bat species there is. So that's why when they came up with this action, they called it the bumblebee. It's got a 20 MOA rail on it, a uh, modular bolt, which is really cool. If you want to change calibers, you know, you've got an action rinse and you've got multiple licensed barrels or for you guys in the States. For example, if you're going shooting coyotes and you want to you know, step down to like a six millimeter or something. You could just swap out your barrel, swap your bolt face to a 308 size bolt face and you're off to the races. So that's pretty cool. Okay, action's made from aluminum or aluminum as we like to, to joke with. And I went with Vortex rings on this build and a Vortex AMG, uh, obviously super tactical scope, but also a very light scope, which was something that was definitely a requirement. Now this setup is so light, I actually don't have the actual weight. So I'll put the weight for us down here. This tripod is a spotting scope tripod. It's not a tripod designed to hold the rifle. So that gives you an idea of how freaking light the setup is. Got the little bubble level on there, that's probably not needed. I like to shoot off my reticle, okay, when I'm hunting in scenarios like this. And that's one thing you guys would have seen in last year's hunting video. And why I really went for this caliber specifically, it's going to be pretty quick. So if I zero at 100, my first half mole line that I'm going to have on this EBR7C reticle is 230 meters. My one mole line is 320 meters. So that gives you guys an idea of how flat shooting this caliber is. Now, if you went into a hunt, instead of necessarily zeroing at 200, if you really wanted to shoot off your reticle and have a 200 meter zero, I would still zero at 100, then dial my scope to my 200 setting to sort of cover your bases. Now generally what you would do, you would look at the area where a game is likely to approach from, what sort of distances you're working with, and maybe set yourself up like that. You gotta remember though what you did, because otherwise if you go off your 100 meter zero, you're gonna make a mistake. So kind of what I like to do, I like to memorize those numbers and we're gonna do a separate video on that heading into hunting season for us in South Africa, which I'm really excited for. Also some hacks for you, how you could set up your scope if you're not so familiar with dialing a scope that will make your life a whole lot easier. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. Also for a little bonus content, like photos of how I'm building these, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Impact Shooting. I'm gonna have that for you guys down here. Now, we are also going to be utilizing this guy, okay? This is the lightweight, it's actually called Get Light Full Game Changer. And I'm going to run this as my sort of hunting bag. Because the last few years, I've actually been hunting with my match bag, which is incredibly heavy. This is the same thing. The rifle sits really nice on it, and you can hook it onto your belt of like a carabiner or something and not have to log the heavy bag around which is super cool. Then we're gonna have a Trigger Tech Diamond two stage in the back there. And then this at the moment is housed in an MDT LSS Gen 2 chassis. So this is a pretty lightweight setup. It still doesn't have that sharp angles like we're working with on the ACC. And I fitted it with an MDT Arca rail. Now one thing you guys will note, and there'll be some questions on this, is Pete, there's nothing on the end of that. Right, at the moment. There's nothing on the end of that. I probably will end up going with a muzzle brake or a suppressor. I haven't quite decided yet, but for now, I'm not gonna be shooting Magnum calibers anytime soon. So for now, I'm gonna keep it like this. In fact, this barrel is still so dirty from shipping that I need to clean this rifle all out. Um, I'm trying to think if I miss anything and I'm running just the vertical grip because I like having everything the same on all of my setups. And that's one of the big reasons we partnered with Trigger Tech that we can actually have 
the same triggers in every single rifle whereas previously we were kind of told hey you got to shoot this and that rifle and that i just like to have all my things the same and that's just it's just a consistency thing um yeah so pretty excited we are working with the vortex ridgeview tripod I don't think I'll shoot from this, but I also don't think I'm gonna carry the Radeon tripod, which that camera is on. Yeah, so I'm freaking pumped on this build. It came out awesome. I'm calling her Sam. I like to name all my rifles. I still haven't thought of a name for my six dasher, so if you guys have any suggestions, make sure you leave those down in the comments. Anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd show you a quick little build overview of this project. I am extremely pumped how it came out. By the way, at the moment, there's no bipod on this, okay? I'm going to be running a triple pull sky pod and in an ideal world where just the timing was sort of out on this let me step under this muzzle and get a little bit closer to you guys again the timing was a little bit out on this we were hoping that the new MDT hunting chassis would be here in time which would obviously be carbon fiber everything and then sort of the receiver area would be made from magnesium 26 ounces in total weight with an integrated arca rail and then i'm going to run the triple pull skypod which will allow you to solve pretty much any problem out there shooting off like medium sized bushes or over medium sized bushes so it's going to add quite a lot of versatility so it's, it's a little bit of a bummer but i wanted to get it in the right spec instead of just getting one in you know for the sake of it i wanted to wait for the unit with the integrated arca one thing to note though if you do go with the bat bumblebee action it does take Remington 700 components, however you have to make a slight modification to your chassis. But there was no big deal, Bruce over at Bat Machine did that for me when he chambered my rifle. It's a very easy modification to do and basically that just allows that flat aluminium footprint to give you more stiffness. This action is incredibly stiff. They did extensive testing with it and they are over the moon with the results. So. I'm pumped on this build, I'm even more pumped to go hunting with it and we've got a build relatively similar to this that unfortunately didn't come into the country or no it did come into the country but there was a serial number mismatch so it's not here it's chambered in something else also on a carbon fiber barrel in seven millimeter and that's going to be sort of my more big game you know hunting style thing uh if you guys want i can do like a super geeked out video on the action specifically with all the features and the barrel and the weights and everything this was literally just a bare bones quick this is what we're working with type of video and I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you're subscribed. Leave a comment, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a dislike because that also drives the engagement up. So that helps us a ton. So I want to thank you guys for watching and I'm really excited to take you hunting with me. This year we're going to, we've booked three hunts this year. So I'm going to have a lot of meat for my family. We don't shoot well, we do shoot things that we don't eat, like baboons, for example, and absolutely going to go hunting baboons as soon as my hand is ready. We're going to take this thing babooning and probably fire form all our brass shooting baboons. Um, baboons cause massive damage to the properties in South Africa, so we have places with permits in place where we can hunt baboons. So I'm super excited to do that. We'll probably get out and start doing that in the next couple of weeks, so have a look out for that. I know you guys are super pumped on those videos. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. I can wave now. Woo! <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye.